Yo, what's going on guys? It's Scott here, and today we're going to talk about how the Lakers match up with the Warriors. The Lakers front office admit that a large part of their plans this offseason were to figure out a way to combat the Warriors. They realized that no matter who they brought in, they wouldn't have a chance to outshoot them in a seven-game series. Instead, they added tough-minded defenders that can also make plays offensively in Rajon Rondo and Lance Stevenson. Bringing back KCP also improves the defensive improvement from the Lakers last season, which brought them to 13th in the league in defensive rating from their previous third rating. JaVale McGee should also help with their defense as he provides athleticism and rim protection to a roster that previously had Brooke Lopez at center. Even with these additions, it'll take time for the Lakers to compete with the Warriors, especially since half the roster this season wasn't there last year. On paper, it looks like the pieces should all fit together once they get their chemistry sorted out and how they'll want to rotate guys in and out. Right now, it looks like the starting lineup will be Lonzo, KCP, Ingram, LeBron, and JaVale. As far as matching up with the Warriors starting five, they look pretty suited to do so on the defensive end. Lonzo and KCP both have the speed to stick with Curry and Clay on the perimeter, and specifically Lonzo has enough length to give Curry problems if they aren't switching KCP onto him. Then in terms of Ingram's body type, he's almost the perfect player to guard Kevin Durant. He has very good height and length for his position, which is key to contesting shots from Durant. Ingram still has a lot to learn to become a top-level defender, but if he can make a jump this season, that could be an interesting matchup come playoff time. LeBron will have an easy time handling Draymond Green. Green is often utilized as a playmaker for Curry and Clay shots, and he rarely ever makes plays for himself. Having LeBron on Draymond gives the Lakers an extra switchable defender on the perimeter to make it difficult for those guys to get their shots off. Then the final player, which obviously many teams won't have an answer for, is DeMarcus Cousins. Cousins can handle it out on the perimeter and step out for three, or bully his way to the rim and finish through contact. JaVale might have a hard time defending him, but there's really no one else on the Lakers roster that can contest Boogie's size and strength, and that may be a problem if he comes back healthy. For the bench, the Lakers actually have a pretty good edge on the Warriors offensively and defensively. They're much deeper and a lot of players on their bench could interchange with anyone in the starting lineup except for LeBron. Their bench could be one of the best in the league next season as they'll have an elite floor leader in Rajon Rondo and a potential sixth man of the year candidate in Kyle Kuzma. They also have other good role players in Lance Stevenson and Josh Hart and could even go as far as Mo Wagner if he's able to prove himself. The Warriors really only have Iguodala and Sean Livingston as reliable members of their bench. Of course Jordan Bell and Quinn Cook have been productive at times, but they also haven't always been in the rotation. The only addition they made to their bench this offseason was Jonas Jurebko, who could be a good spot-up shooter for them but shouldn't be expected to play a lot of minutes. Clearly when breaking it down, the Warriors have five all-stars and no matter how well the Lakers match up with them, their talent will take over. If the Lakers can toughen up the game like the Rockets did in the conference finals last season, then they could make it difficult for them, but we'll have to see how the season goes before we get to that point. That's all I have for this video guys, I hope you did enjoy. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see daily Laker content throughout the offseason, and leave a like if you enjoyed, and thanks for watching.